morning guys thanks for tuning in to another video the goal for this video is to make the world's freshest fish and chips i've seen it done a lot um, a lot of different variations of fish and chips on youtube but i haven't come across anyone who's done it from from caught fresh to into the grease we're going to attempt to catch and release into the grease and make the world's best fish and chips <laughs> Okay, so just before we get started, it feels like a pretty good time to thank today's sponsor. Yeah, I'm just kidding. No one's sponsoring this video. I'm today's sponsor. <laughs> but if you guys want to support the channel, you um, go down there and hit that like button. That would be pretty dope. So we're after something that you know, resembles the traditional fish and chips. It's got to be a white meat. I think typically it's made with like haddock, cod, or halibut, one of those fish. So ideally, I'd catch a fish called a burbot, aka freshwater cod, but pretty difficult to catch in the summer unless you're coming out here at like two in the morning. So the second best fish that I could think of that's available in this lake is a white fish. So see if we can hook a white fish real quick here, get him filleted up, get him into the grease. There we go. Come here, buddy. Okay. okay. Well, it took long enough. Finally, got our food. Good eater size whitey. Let's go. Took a Took a little longer than we were hoping, but got her done. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate your service. Gotta be honest, I was getting a little nervous there that it, was, it wasn't gonna happen today, but we got one. Uh, it took a little longer than I was hoping. So, I mean, some days you're out here and it's every five minutes you're catching a whitey. Other days you can see them, but they're not as active. So on to the cooking portion of this video. So the first thing we're gonna do, is deal with the potato, the chips. So we're gonna get them cut up into into some healthy chunks for for chips or fries, <laughs> and just let them soak in water while I prep the rest of the stuff just to rinse that starch off. All right, so I guess next logical thing to do is get the fish prepped. So the fish has been bleeding out in there for about, I don't know, maybe 15, 20 minutes. I'm trying to mitigate the mess as much as I can. Come here, buddy. You guys are pretty simple to clean up. I just have to go run right down the backbone, take the ribs out. Take the pen bones out. One slab. Ma'am, I mean, thank you, ma'am.
I'm gonna need a paper towel for this part. <laughs> Always the hardest part. Alrighty, there you have it folks, the whitefish fillet. Typically I leave it at that point um, and cook it with the pin bones in, but recently been finding that most of the pin bones, at least maybe half the pin bones aren't actually dissolving during the cook. So I picked up these uh, fish tweezers, fish tweezers, and their purpose is to pick out the pin bones. So we're gonna give that, gonna give it a shot here. Pin bones are right here, listen. So they just go up and down. Now, the thing about white fish is that it's a pretty delicate meat. So you wanna be careful when you do this. There you go. That's what you don't want. Okay. White fish got this uh, stark stuff. I'm gonna try to take some of that off. I don't wanna to waste too much meat, but I don't want that dark meat. It's the bloodier, fishier tasting crappy stuff. There we go. Okay, well, there's our filet. Looks pretty mint. There we go. Pretty happy with these, uh, these little tweezers here. The key. I think the key is, is you have to pull them slow. If you rush it, you'll end up breaking the bones in half. If you're interested guys in picking up some fish tweezers, I'll link these down in the, in the description below. Oh yeah. If you're gonna be dumb like me and never do this, Make sure you have a fire extinguisher in your boat because you know, open flames, boat. Don't be like me, but if you are, be smart. I can picture it now. Episode 12, season 18, thousand ways to die. All right, well, we're waiting for the oil to heat up. We can get going on some of our uh, batter. So it's gonna be a two, gonna be making two different um, flour mixtures. The first is a is the is like a seasoned flour, and then we're gonna do a secondary batter, which will be the beer batter. This is just straight flour here. I don't think I'm gonna add too much to this. Honestly, I brought a, a few different spices: uh, a little turmeric, a little chipotle. What do we got? A little garlic. Nothing crazy. Look at this oil mixture, it's so dicey. So dicey. For the beer batter, is this gonna be straight flour? And I brought a little bit of baking soda. Put a little bit of that in there. Mix that in good. Woo! That's hot. Boat waves are not our friend right now. And lastly for a batter, a beer. I know it probably doesn't look good. Beer in a boat, you know, don't do this. It'd be hilarious if the OPP came right now and pulled me over. Imagine trying to explain to them what I'm doing. We're gonna take these out and then put them back in for a double fry. Oh yeah. Healthy. Let those cool off for a second before we put them back in. Okay, and it looks like our batter's just about ready. Might be a little runny, but Hey, that's okay, we're in a boat. Okay, we'll put the fries back in for round two.
Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Those are looking just about perfect. Oh yeah. Oh come on. Who is this guy? Who is this guy? So flower mix first. And you want to get that excess flour off. For some reason, that's what the pros always say. And we're gonna dip them in the beer batter. Oh yeah, that is looking perfect. Okay, here we go. It all comes down to this. Beautiful. Okay, well that one's cooking. We'll get the next one fired up. Oh! <laughs> Shit. Oh, baby. <laughs> oh, look at that. Frick yeah. Be careful this time, be careful. Ah. <laughs> Check it out. Check it out. Oh yeah, fresh from the source. <laughs> wow. I cannot believe how good that looks. I really think I, out I actually outdid myself on this one. I'm so fired up with how that turned out. <laughs> I forgot to make a freaking tartar sauce. Nothing fancy. I'm just gonna cut up a pickle. Got some mayo. Lemon. Just 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 try sauce. Gotta be honest, I'm pretty, pretty excited about this. <laughs> Big fish and chips guy, but never have I had it this fresh. This fish was swimming 30 minutes ago. Oh yeah, look at that. Freaking beautiful. Oh. <laughs> I outdid myself this time. Woo. Cheers. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> that right there. That is it. This is it. This is the best fish and chips I've ever had. Oh my God. I mean, come on. Look at that, just, look at that crisp. It's so crispy. Man, oh, fries too, double, double fried these bad boys. Sorry, the, the chips, look at the chips. Crispy on the outside, soft on the inside. I mean, I mean, where'd we go from here? This is, this is the ultimate fish and chips. You don't see Gordon Ramsay catching his own fish, do you? Hey, Gordon? Hey, Gordo? Where you at, Gordo? You b <laughs> That's all rope. I seriously can't get over how good that was. Well, that's one way to do it. Catch and cook in the boat. I don't think it really gets much fresher than that. That is the definition of fresh fish and chips. That was delicious. I'm uh, I'm surprised how well that, oh, how well that turned out. Yeah, it's been a great day. Fishing was a little slow, but I mean, hey, we managed a big old bass, good eater size whitey, cooked it up. 
We didn't light the boat on fire. That's a win in my books. That's it for me. Uh, that's it for now. I gotta head back to the dock, finish that half beer that I still have left. <laughs> Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you soon. Yeah.